Beloved, are you seeking profound teachings from the Bible that will deepen your understanding of Christ and nurture your spiritual growth? Look no further. The Grace Life Coming Podcast is here to guide you on a transformative journey. Join us as we explore a wide range of subjects, including the finished work of Christ, the knowledge of the Holy Spirit, the words and life of Jesus, the miracles of Jesus, and so much more. Our podcast offers simple yet profound teachings that will empower you to grow and mature in the faith. The Grace Life Kobe podcast will help you engage, learn, and connect. Don't miss out on this incredible opportunity to grow in your faith and connect with others who share your passion for Christ. Grace Life Kobe podcast, raising men to completeness in Christ. Subscribe and connect with us today and embark on a life-changing adventure. Grace to you, Jesus is Lord. Beloved, we are glad to have you listening again to simple yet profound teachings from God's Word. Sit back and be blessed throughout this session. God bless you. Abba Father, we bless and appreciate you. We give you glory and praise. We give you honor and thanksgiving. We say, hallowed be your name forever in the name of Jesus. Sweet Holy Spirit, we reverence you, Jesus. We glorify you. We thank you, Lord, for another time of fellowship in your presence. We ask, Holy Spirit, that you teach us, grant us understanding from the word today, that we may live to your glory and praise forever in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah to Jesus. We give God thanks and praise for another privilege of fellowship in his presence. To Jesus alone be all the glory and praise forevermore. Amen and amen. Praise God forevermore. We want to welcome all our listeners from all over the nations of the earth. The good Lord bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen. This is Miracles of Jesus. And uh, we thank the Lord for what he has been teaching us and how we have been learning and growing. Once again, we want to say big bless you to all our media evangelists for the great work you do sharing on all the platforms you do share. The Lord bless you richly in Jesus' name. And also, we want to let you know that our feedback channel is chimdeohahunaministry at gmail.com. Um, we'd like to hear from you and you'll be sure that we'll revert. Amen to Jesus. Amen. Also, we'd like to encourage you to subscribe to Grace Life Komi on uh, Spotify and on YouTube. Praise God forevermore. And also, you can um, feed us back as to which platform you are using to listen to these um, um, teachings. Um, these teachings are on almost all the podcast platforms all over the nations of the earth. And um, we receive information from them once in a while. Praise God forevermore. So we also like to know what platform you are using. Amen to Jesus. We majorly use Spotify. That's our major host. Praise God forevermore. And then um, YouTube came up. Amen. But there are others that take these teachings and air them. So we'd like to know where, what um, platform you are listening from. And we'll be glad to also... Um, communicate back to you. Praise the Lord forevermore. Hallelujah. Our giving channels will be announced to you at the end of this teaching by the announcer. Um, and also you can go to Grace Life Kumi on Spotify and you see our giving channels. Um, send a love gift and you're always blessed as usual in Jesus' name. Amen, Amen to Jesus. Alright, we're still on the fourth miracle of Jesus. Praise God forevermore. And we're going a little further today. Amen to Jesus. We've been draining the Jews in this miracle and we've been learning a lot. Uh, no miracle has taken us this long, feeding of 5,000. I never need to take this long. Amen to Jesus. Amen. But we have to keep going as the Lord is leading us and keep getting all the Lord has for us. We also want to let you know that our first volume of Miracles of Jesus workbook is going to be out anytime soon. Praise God forevermore. So please do well to make your purchases on Amazon. Amen to Jesus. Um, all the notes, basically, they are, they are in the workbook but you also have to go to the teachings on the podcast because um it will help you just you know um work hand in hand with the notes praise god forevermore but at least you have some good quantity of the notes in the workbook and also you can use it to teach for those of us who are bible teachers for those of us who are trying to disciple people in the um in the things of um, christ in the way of christ and in the principle and doctrines of christ you can use these manuals they will help you a great deal you know when we did um, the mandal on i want to know the holy spirit the first um workbook amen to jesus which is over 500 pages one of my mentees told me till date he still refers to that manual, to that workbook, to, you know, mentor his mentees. Praise God forevermore. So these are great resources that are going to help you. Amen to Jesus. The Lord is going to be helping us to release these um, um, miracles of Jesus manuals in the volumes that will be coming out. And please do well to get them. Let the gospel go far. 
teach your people amen to Jesus. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. Today we are going to be continuing and we are looking at so the men sat down. So the men sat down. Amen to Jesus. Um, John chapter 6 verse 10. Same John chapter 6 verse 10. Says, and Jesus said, make the men sit down. Now there, were much, there was much grass in the place. So the men sat down. In number about 5,000. Holy Spirit, grant us revelation into your word today in Jesus' name. Amen. amen and amen. You know, in our previous study, we learned that the men were instructed to sit, although they had not seen the food they were to eat. Amen to Jesus. Amen. They were instructed, they were given an instruction that basically on the normal everyday operation, you would, it would be very difficult to obey such instruction. Praise the Lord forevermore. Now, this was in, an instruction to sit and see. Amen to Jesus. So it was an instruction of faith. And basically, as we walk with the Lord, we are going to be receiving these instructions as we go in on our journey with the Lord. Instructions of faith. Sit and see. Not see to sit, but sit to see. Amen to Jesus. One of the most um, difficult instructions to obey as you go on in your walk with the Lord, when you have not seen anything, why should you be sitting down? Sit to see. is Sit and see is a very challenging instruction. Amen to Jesus. On a larger scale, a lot of Christians do not obey these instructions. They like to see before they sit. Amen to Jesus. Even most people that claim to operate in faith, they are actually seeing before they sit. Amen to Jesus. And um, that's the reason why taking some steps of faith becomes challenging to them because they want to see before they sit. But the instruction here is sit in order for you to what? To see. So until we sit in obedience to the commands of God, we cannot see the miracle he wants to do for us. Until we sit in obedience to divine instructions, to divine orders, to divine commands, we can never see the miracle that God wants to do for us. And let's, face, let's tell ourselves the truth. Um, no matter how much we try to paint you know, the fact that you know, God is on the supply, which I agree, praise God forevermore, God is always on the supply, amen to Jesus. But supplies still have demands attached to them. A supply chain without a demand chain will bring an imbalanced economy. Amen. Praise God forevermore. A supply chain without a demand chain will bring what an imbalanced economy. In economics, then we have what you call the supply curve and the demand word curve. If you have only supply and you don't have demand, are we together? In finances, in the, in, the, in the area of money, when the supply of money exceeds the demand for money, is an economic issue. Is that not so? Praise God forevermore. And when the demand for money increase, it exceeds the supply for money, is also what? An economic issue. For the economy to be balanced, demand must equal what? Supply. Praise God forevermore. And so, we know that God is on the supplying end. He's always supplying. But God still demands of us. Are we together? Because demand, supply without demand, will bring issues. It will produce irresponsible Christianity. Are we together? It will produce irresponsible. And faith is a demand made by God from us, which he enabled us to also meet. Are you getting what I'm saying? So he uses his own faith to demand us to operate in his own faith. So is that actually a demand? I get what I'm saying. So God will always place some demands on us, which could be instructions, I get what I'm saying, which will be, could be commands, but we have the responsibility to do what? To meet these demands. Why? Because without us doing that, we cannot come into partnership with God. And when there is no partnership with God, we would allow God to keep doing what he has to do and we cannot enjoy what God has done for us. So if we must enjoy what God has done for us, then we of necessity have to what? Meet up with the demands that are laid on us. Apostle Paul said it like this, necessity is laid on me. Woe am I if I preach not the gospel. That basically means a demand has been laid on me. Praise God forevermore. So, life must operate on the operations of what? Supply and demand. 
The life of faith is a demand that God places on us, which he has given us the ability to fulfill, to meet that demand. We don't even meet it with our own power. We meet it with his own power. It's his own faith we use to meet the, the demand of faith. So why then will we not meet this demand? Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah to Jesus. Now, so it's very important. It's very important. Amen to Jesus. It's very important. Very important. Very important. Very important. Very important that we meet this demand. Praise the Lord. And um, this is what this journey of our Christian life is all about. The just shall live by faith. It's by using God's faith continuously. Using his faith to reciprocate his love back to him. Using his faith to reciprocate his love back to humanity. Using his faith to make his desires come to pass here on earth. That's, that's all we are living here. That's the life we are living here. Praise God forevermore. He's just using his faith to establish his kingdom here on earth. Amen to Jesus. Now in this study, we will focus on the response of the men to the destruction of Jesus. Jesus gave an instruction. Tell the men to sit down. And now the men responded. The actual fact is that in life we must respond. Either you respond with a yes or you respond with a no. There's nothing called maybe in life. You don't sit on the fence in life. Are you get what I'm saying? Indecision is a decision. That's the truth. Indecision is a decision. So when you say I have not decided, you actually decided. Praise God forevermore. You decided not to decide. And you're deciding not to decide means you've not made a decision. That means you've said a no. Simple. Are we together? So in life, there's always, we are always making decisions. Every day, every time, every second, every, we are making decisions. Amen. Amen. And we are responding or reacting. Amen to Jesus. Now, this man would have reacted by saying, Ah, ah, what is the matter? We have been listening for money tonight, and uh, you are telling us to sit down. Where is the food they want to give us to eat? Eh, we are tired, though. We want to go look for food to eat. Though. That would have been a reaction. Are we together? Praise God. They would have reacted to the instruction of God. And some of the times, as Christians, we are very quick at reacting to the instructions of God. We react. Amen to Jesus. Praise the Lord forevermore. So the instruction of Jesus was, tell the men to sit down. And the Bible says, they sat down. So they did what? They responded. They didn't react. The hardest thing to do is to respond when it seems like there is no reason to respond. When all the situations, circumstances, and all the factors make you believe that you don't need to respond. Are we together? Especially when it looks like what God is telling you to do. It doesn't it doesn't look like there'll be a future in it. It doesn't look like there'll be a solution to the problem. Responding at that point becomes very difficult. But every time we, 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 God gives an instruction and we, we give a positive return to it, we have responded in faith. Are we together? We have responded in faith. Now, this response of this man was an act of what? Obedience. So these men obeyed irrespective of their tired and fainting bodies, irrespective of their innate natural desire and abilities to provide for themselves, and irrespective of absence of visible food sufficient to feed them. So they had to negate three major, three major and cogent factors to respond to Jesus. And if we must respond in faith, we would always have to negate these factors. Are we together? To respond in faith. That's why the work of faith is not a natural work. It's not a human work. Are you get what I'm saying? It's not a work based on our abilities. It is God's work. Are we together? So when the Bible says the just shall live by his faith, it's actually saying the just shall live the life of God. That's all. Because you have to negate these three factors for you to operate in obedience. I get what I'm saying? These three factors must be negated in order for you to operate in obedience. If you don't negate them, you cannot operate in faith. Because God called the things that be not as though they were. Now, so how can you begin to operate in, an, in a physically irrational manner? And you call that faith. Are we together? The thing is not existing, and you are, it says it's already existing. I don't understand. It is not existing. 
But you are saying it's already existing. How can you rationalize that? Faith is not rational to the natural man. It is God's way of approaching issues. That's faith. It's God's way of approaching issues. And for the natural man, it is never rational. So it will negate reason. Are we together? Praise God forevermore. What the natural man believes is when you see the facts, move by the facts. But what faith does is when you see the fact, move by God's stance. It's as simple as that. And it's always, it's always, it's always at loggerheads and always at parallel sides with the natural man's um, uh, way of thinking. Amen to Jesus. So, we can see what this man did in the act of obedience. And this was an act of faith. So, obedience to God's command is and will always be an act of faith. Obedience to God's command is an act of faith and it will always be what? An act of faith. So when we talk about obedience, the Bible says obedience is better than sacrifice. Simply put, living by faith is better than what? Trying to live by sacrificial way of life. Are we together? And one of the things that may look so, so you know, on, on um, let me use the word, on glamorous, not glamorous enough, is living by faith. Because sacrifice looks more glamorous. Sacrifice looks like you are doing something. Are you getting me? Sacrifice looks like you are, you, are in, you, are, you, are, you are doing something, you are involving yourself. But some of the times when we are walking by faith, it looks as if we are not doing anything. That's why they look, um, I remember somebody called me, this was somebody that whenever the person is in need of prayers, the person called me and I prayed for the person, and the person was already having testimony. And the person called me one day by 10 o'clock in the morning, and I answered the call. And the person asked me, are you sleeping? Then I started pioneering the work of the ministry. And I was like, no. So what this person naturally believes is that we as men of God, we sleep through the day, sleep through the night, and then prepare one message for Sunday and one message for maybe the midweek service. And then we'll go and preach. And then we'll come back and sleep again. If I am sleeping the way you are thinking, will I be praying for you and you'll be seeing answers to your prayer? The way you think, I'm, if I'm sleeping like that, you, 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 are, you are in the exam or you are calling me. If I'm sleeping like that, Will I be praying for you and you'll be seeing answers to your prayer? Those who are sleeping like that, God made them to pray for you. You see that you see answers to your prayer. So living a life of faith, they always make it look like it, it's not, you see, there's nothing, you're not doing anything heavy for the Lord. I remember when uh, one of my, one of my mason, the mason who was, you know, um, um, building um, the first house the Lord built for us. And one day I was standing with him in the site and he told me, say, Pastor, this our work is very hard. I said, hey, say yes. Say, see now, under the sun, under the sun, Person with setting block. Say, Pastor, you, your work no hard at all. Your work is no hard. I say, hey, serious. Say, yes, your work is nice. Is it not to just go and preach? I say, hey, so go and preach. I say, okay, I say, all right, come and do fasting. And that was a period where I was fasting, like you understand what I'm saying? I say, come and do fasting. He said, no, 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 you cannot do. And if you see his stomach big, eh? Plenty food and plenty alcohol. I say, you come and do fasting. Let this your stomach enter your back. Because let <laughs> you enter your back, you will know whether my work is easy or not. He said, No, 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 if it's for fasting, you cannot. I said, You cannot do fasting. Yet you say, My work is easy. My work is very easy. It's a work that is hard. Come and fast. Come and pray. Come and pray. And you are praying. I know that you are tired. But you still have to keep praying. Your body is telling you, Rest. You have to keep praying. Your mates will be sleeping. You are pre sleeping. You are sleep praying. Come and do it. Say, no, we cannot do fasting. I say, it's all right, no problem. So you can see that there's no work that is easy. Actually, the life of faith, when you look at it, people actually look at it as it doesn't, it's not powerful. Are you get what I'm saying? It's not powerful. Sacrifice looks more powerful. When you are sacrificing, they see you are doing something. They see you are, pay, you are going through pains. That is why, you know, the, the early church, the, um, not the early church, as it were, um, when the, 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 the um, the church began to metamorphose into Catholics and every of that. You know, the Catholics believed a lot in penance. Are you getting what I'm saying? Then they believe in penance. And penance is a way of, let me use the word, atoning for your own sin. So you see them, they crawl on their knee, are you getting what I'm saying? And crawl on their knee to do penance. Some, of the, some other sects or some other sects believe in flogging themselves to do penance. With that, they feel that they are, they are doing something to get the attention 
of God. Are you getting what I'm saying? But we don't need to do anything to get the attention of God. Jesus has done everything to get the attention of God. So all we need to do is by faith believe in what Jesus has done and we get the attention of the Father God. But that one looks seems so easy and it doesn't look like you are doing anything. So the life of faith for the natural man looks like a, 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 a life that does not carry weight. A life that, you see, that, is not in, that there's, no, there's no work actually involved. Are, are we together? How will you put your job in praying and fasting and praying and fasting? Get to do something more than prayer and fasting. Are we together? So the life of faith is always like that for the natural man. Okay, God tells the children of Israel, Second Chronicles, Second Chronicles chapter 20, take his, um, um, your army and then the singer should be in front of your army. Where do you see that kind of thing happen? That singers will go in front of army. They will slaughter them before they start the battle. But God says, let, let praise go before thee. And then people are like, ah, what we should expect is something more better. If God has told us to carry some bullocks and be um, slaughtering them and carry their blood, I mean, spraying their blood on the road as we are going, would I be able to accept that? But this praise thing it seems so cheap. Faith looks to, it looks um, irrational, powerless, and cheap to the natural man. Are we together? That's why when you are living by faith, they begin to ask you, ah, ah, how are you doing it? How you? But we, we are all in this ministry thing together. Now, how do you say you are doing this ministry? Why, why are you suffering? Like, why are you not taking our... Look? Faith does not look rational to even some Christians. How are you doing it? Uh -uh. Hey, this thing is not like that now. There's a way we get it done now. Are we together? Praise God forevermore. So faith will negate these factors. Now, so why is obedience to the commands of God always an act of faith? It is always an act of faith. Once you obey the command of God, you have acted in faith. How do I live by faith? Obey God. Simple. How do I live by faith? Simple what? Obey God. Every time you obey God, you have acted in faith. And you know what? That is how your faith grows. By, it starts with simple obedience. Are you getting what I'm saying? Obedience of when you wake up in the morning, say thank you, Jesus. Read your Bible. Pray and go to work or go to school. That simple act, it looks very simple, is that not so? But that is an act of faith. And as you start obeying that simple act, you wake up in the morning, say thank you, Jesus, read your Bible, pray a simple prayer, and go to school or go to work, then it now changes to another level. If you can successfully obey the Lord in that one, he will, take, he will change your level. Patrick Muller, wants, Patrick Muller sorry, said that when he wakes up in the morning, he reads his Bible until he gets satisfied. <laughs> he said he reads his Bible until he gets satisfied. So until he's satisfied, it doesn't stop. So if it is 100 chapters that get him satisfied that day, that's when he will stop reading. And he says until he finishes reading his Bible, everything is on standstill. He doesn't want to attend to any matter. He doesn't listen to anything. Whether the children in the orphanage are eating or not is not his business. Until he finished reading his Bible. So Bible first was his ideology. And he said when he gets satisfied, then he's full and then he can face the day. He said, but if he has not read his Bible, he knows that he's not ready to face the day. He's not full. So he said one day he met a businessman. And this businessman was just traveling from country to country, country to country. And he asked the man, are you born again? I think the man said yes, something like that. And he had like, how often do you spend time studying the word of God and praying? The man said, I don't have time for that. I'm too busy for that. I really don't have time to study, to read the Bible and pray. You know, but I just find some of these quick ways to get the word of God. And I don't have time. I don't have time. And he said he was so dis, he was so heartbroken for the man. Because he said he was wondering how the man was surviving. It was only the man was surviving. He says, so this man is just walking empty, dry, empty, dry. He was wondering how this man was surviving without reading, even him, until he's full before he can start his day. Then how can somebody not even eat at all and go into the day? So he was wondering how this man was surviving. But believe you me, Patrick Muller did not start with that approach. Are you getting what I'm saying? He might have started with, well, as a child, maybe, read your Bible and pray every day. Maybe one verse, two verses, three verses. Then he now became 
a deep hunger. The hunger kept growing. I know as you grow, your stomach expands. As the baby grows, the stomach expands. And also, the baby begins to hiccup because the stomach is expanding. So his, his stomach in his soul for the world began to expand. Began to expand. Until the point where he, until he's satisfied for the day, it doesn't stop. Are we together? There are, men, there are men of God who say they used to read 30 chapters every day at a point in time in their life. It's not because they were doing competition. Are you getting what I'm saying? It was hunger. It was hunger. And that thing didn't start like that too. It started with one small obedience. Are you getting what I'm saying? And the obedience metamorphosed. The obedience grew. So obedience grows. That's when obedience grows, faith is growing. It's as simple as that. So we must grow in our obedience to the Lord. That shows our faith is what? Growing. So let's answer this question. Why is obedience to the commands of God always an act of faith? Obedience to the command of God is always an act of faith because obedience to God's instructions will always negate the following. Number one, it will negate feelings. It will always negate feelings. Feelings of tiredness, fainting bodies. These men, they were tired, is that not so? Their bodies were fainting. And telling them to, they have been sitting down to listen since, is that not, is that not so? Telling them to sit down any extra more time is, is, is detrimental to their tired bodies. Are we together? And some of the time, is, is, let me use the word, it's a little not palatable to know that God will always tell you to sit down a little more. Yeah. When you are expecting to say, okay, stand up and go, that's when he may tell you, sit down a little more. That's what faith is all about. And that a little more sitting down is what many of us don't want to do. Even though the grass is there to cushion our feet, we don't want to sit again. I've been sitting for hours, Lord. Okay, if you want to give us food, let us stand like this food and go. But God says, sit down. Sit down. That a little more sitting, we don't want to do it. It's not easy. So, our, we, our feelings and our bodies, our tired bodies, would always rebel to what? That instruction of sitting. But faith will always what? Negate what? Feelings. And what? The faint, our faint bodies. And look at the Bible speaking about um, Abraham. Faith negated his dead body and the dead womb of Sarah. Is that not so? Romans 4 verse 9, he says, And be not weak in faith, he considered not, he considered not. You know what strong faith does to you? It makes you not consider. It makes you inconsiderate. <laughs> And he said, why are you so inconsiderate? His strong faith. He considered not his own body. Now dead. The word dead, dead, if you look at it in the Greek, it means impotent. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now dead. When he was about a hundred years old. Are you getting what I'm saying? When he was about a hundred years old. Now, he gave birth to Isaac 13 years before this. Is that not so? His body was not yet dead then. Are you getting what I'm saying? But at the point where this prophetic word, when the angel told them, now nah, at this point his body was dead. Are you getting what I'm saying? Are, are we together? The body was, he said he did not consider that dead body. So he knew that the body was dead. He knew. Are you getting me? When he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb, as for Sarah's own, ah, by 60s, eh, 50 something, 60, 60 something. You have hit that, po that, po that point of menopause. Is that not so? Hey. So Sarah was not in menopause. She was in megapause. So her womb was, was dead in totality. But Abraham did not consider. He was inconsiderate. See, faith makes you inconsiderate to the natural factors to fulfill the demands of God. So they'll be wondering, why can you not consider yourself? Why can you not consider your children? Why can you not consider your family? Why can you not consider... When people start telling you, consider, consider, it means that they are telling you not to walk in faith. Are you know what I'm saying? And then when you are in obedience to God, and they start telling you, consider, consider, consider the facts, consider the situation surrounding us. Once that consider stock starts coming out, it's... A, it's it's a fact that you have been walking in faith since. Are you getting what I'm saying? And the devil is trying to dissuade you from walking in faith. Abraham did not consider. When you are walking in faith, you'll be inconsiderate. So long as it's the Lord that is telling you. 
you're being considerate. And people always ask, people at the point in time will be saying, this thing you are doing, see, let's give things a human face. You start hearing talks like that. Let's give things a human face. See, let's be human in our operations. Let's be rational. Okay, let's, you will start hearing all those kinds of things. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. You start hearing all these kinds of things. Why? Because it's simple. You are inconsiderate to natural feelings. Number two, obedience to God's instruction, we always negate natural desire to trust in our own abilities to provide for ourselves. Hallelujah to Jesus. Proverbs 3 verse 5, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. Amen to Jesus. Now, this is one of the hardest things to do, especially for people who like to do things for themselves. Are you getting what I'm saying? This is one of the hardest things I learned. I'm still learning, not I learned. If I've learned it, I will not be where I am today. I'm still learning it. Are you getting what I'm saying? One of the hardest things for me to, to, to still keep learning, because naturally, I like to do things for myself. I hate, I, see, I like people to give to me, but I don't like people to give to me. Are <laughs> you get what I'm saying? I like to earn everything. I like people to give to me, but I like to earn everything. I like to earn every. I want to earn it. I want it to be the fruit of my labor. I don't like, I don't like, see, I don't like when it has to just come on, you know, without me working. Are you get what I'm saying? I like you to teach me how to fish. I don't like you to give me fishes. It's my natural person. Are we together? I like to earn things. It's, 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 I've been working with the Lord. I've been learning to, okay, I love people to give to you. But also, if you are giving to me, you must give to me in honor. Not, not in, in um, disdain. And if, if you do that, you see something that you're not expecting. Because I'm a natural earner. I like to earn. Amen to Jesus. I trust in my um, planning ability. I trust in my in my working ability, I trust in every of those things. I had learned to trust in them. But I journeyed with the Lord in faith to learn how to trust in the Lord. Not in all those things. It's good. I still work. Are you get what I'm saying? I still love to earn. But above all, I learn, I'm learning to trust in the Lord more. Amen to Jesus. Amen. And then number three. It negates the rational and natural desire to always see before we leap. That desire to always see before we leap, to always see before we act. Faith always negates it. Are we together? It will always, it will always, faith will always negate that desire. Because it's a natural, inherent desire in every human to always see before you act. To always see before you leap. Amen to Jesus. You know, we've been told, see before you leap. Don't just leap like that. See before you leap. But faith negates that. Are you getting what I'm saying? So long as God has told you leap, you can leap. Amen. Go to the children of Israel. God told Moses, tell the children of Israel to do what? To move forward. How would they be moving forward? Have they seen that the Red Sea has been parted? Are you getting what I'm saying? But I say, tell them to move forward. Are we together? And he stretched forth his rod. And through the night, God was parting the Red Sea. But they were already moving while God was parting the Red Sea. Are you getting what I'm saying? They were moving while the Red Sea was being parted. God did not tell them, wait first. Let me finish parting the Red Sea. Then you can now start moving. He said, no. He didn't do that. He told them what? Move forward. While you are moving, I am parting. By the time you come to the, to the, to, to, to the shore of the Red Sea, you see that I parted the Red Sea. But if you don't move at divine instruction, you are waiting for God to get it done first before you move. You will never move and you never, God will never get it done for you. Because God has to be able to trust you that you trust him. <laughs> he has to be able to trust you that you trust him. So, okay, God, what if I move now and I get to the shore of the sea and I see that you have no power? So you don't trust him. So that means he doesn't trust you that you trust him. So when both of you, when you cannot trust him, and he cannot trust you that you trust him. We remain like that. See, we will not part. You will not move forward. The Egyptians will catch up with you. It's as simple as that. But he also trusts you that you what? You trust him. So what does he do? He tells you move forward. Trust me enough that by the time you get to the shore, I would have parted the sea. Trust me enough to do that. Trust me enough to do that. But many of us, we want God to first part the sea. Then we carry our binoculars. 
and we look at the sea and see that they have been parted and we are sure that God has parted the sea and then we now say, God, now we can move. It doesn't work that way. That's not the life of faith. That's not the life of faith. No, it's not the life of faith. You have to trust God and move at his instruction, at his command, and trust him to do his own. When you, he, you have done the one he told you to do, then you have to trust him that he will do the one he said he will do. Uh -huh. I get what I'm saying. But you cannot say, I, I cannot trust God yet to see. Uh, see. I cannot trust God yet to. Let me first see him do what he said he will do before I start. No, that is not, that is not the way it's done here. It's not the way it's done. And that's why a lot of Christians, the kind of life we are living, amen to Jesus. Amen. That's the kind of life. So we want to, we want to um, see before we leap. We want to see before we leap. We want to be sure. Uh, you understand what I'm saying? Let's be sure. Let's be sure that God will do this thing he said he will do. Before we start taking steps of faith. Let's see. We, see, we are not doubting. Don't get us wrong. See. See, you don't understand. We, don't get us wrong. We are not doubting God. See, we are not acting in doubt and unbelief. See, we just want to be sure. What of that assurance do you need? The word of God is not enough assurance to you. It says he has exalted his word above his name. That means he has exalted his word, his promise, above all his attributes. All his attributes because he was, his, his names are based on his attributes. Jaira, provider, is his attribute of being a provider. So he has exalted his word above all his attributes, all his characteristics. And if you cannot, if you cannot trust that word of his that has exalted above all his characteristics, what else will you be able to trust? What other assurance can you have? You will never act in faith. Let's be sure. See, I'm not saying, see, I'm not saying, see, this is what we are saying. See, you cannot put all your eggs in one basket. You see, we are not saying God will not do it. See. We know, yeah, we know God with you. See, we know. See, don't get me wrong. See, don't get me wrong. We know God with you, but see, let's take precautions. With God, there are no precautions. When you are with God, there are no precautions. God is your precaution. God is our precaution. God is our safety valve. God is our insurance. We don't need any other insurance. So when we act in faith, we act, we act, woof, just like that. Because it's our very insurance. Are we together? Is our insurance. So why would we be looking for an insurance outside our insurance? Hey, that policy will fail. <laughs> that policy will fail like no it, 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 it failed on arrival. The only insurance policy that can never fail is the word of God. Heaven and earth will pass away, but his word will never pass away. That's our insurance policy. Huh. John chapter 20, verse 28 to 29. It says, and Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have what? Believed. This blessing is for those who are ready to go. And God is their only insurance. All they need is the word from God. Is their, the word of God is an insurance. It's all the insurance. Is. That's what, that's, that's, this blessing is meant for such kind of people. Are we together? That's their life. Their life of faith is, God, your word is our insurance. Are we together? And so long as it's your word, we are good to fly. Amen. Amen. And also, why, are we to obe why is obedience to the command of God always an act of faith? Number four, without obedience, it is impo it's impossible to act in faith and receive the good of the land, who is Christ. Isaiah 1 verse 19. If you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. It's not enough to be willing. We must be what? Obedient. We must be what? Obedient. Because a lot of Christians are willing to know. In fact, let me say 99% of Christians are willing, if not 100% of Christians are willing. They really want to. But the power to do is where what? Obedience comes in. And that's where faith is at work. And we can only eat the good of the land when we step into faith. And we step out by faith. And when we live by faith. Are we together? Obedience is where the work lies. You know, when I started pioneering the work of the ministry, a pastor was talking to me and he said, Chimdi, if I could, I, 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 I celebrate God for this grace he has given him to obey. He said, if I could obey God one tenth of the instruction he has been given to me, I will not be where I am today. Praise God forevermore. 
Because, no, 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 no. There are many factors I have to make do with. Even to today, obedience has been costing me. Are we together? And it will keep costing us. But the beautiful thing about it is that the benefits are beyond words can tell. Amen. It is not enough to hear the instruction from the word of God. It is more than enough to obey it. Are we together? Because only obedience turns an instruction into a manifestation. Only obedience turns an instruction into a manifestation. Peter toiled through the night. And Jesus told him, lay down your net. And he said, Lord, we have toiled through the night. And we've not gotten any fish. But at thy word. He obeyed. And the instruction turned into a manifestation. What happened? They got in a great catch that their net began to break. Only obedience turns divine instruction to manifestation. Every instruction is at best letter. Only obedience can make the spirit become flesh. Are you get what I'm saying? Every instruction is at best a letter. And if you don't add obedience to it, as led by the spirit, it will not become flesh. It will not become manifestation. So that's the reason why we see, we see some Christians, they say, it's the same Bible we are reading. Now. How come these ones are getting the result and not getting the result? Ah, sir, the question is, how are you obeying? Are you getting me? You are complaining that some are getting results. See, in this generation where they are trying to play down on obedience to divine instruction, I think our generation should wake up. This slumber is a bad one. You see, somebody told you that the Lord gave him a covenant. And you come with your, um, what do you call it, with your biblical exegesis, which I am not fighting. And you say, no man can have covenant with God. It's only God that has covenant with man. Uh, the actual fact is that for God to have covenant with man, man must be in covenant with him. It's simple. The covenant is not caught between God and himself. I get what I'm saying. It's caught between God and man. The Old Testament was the covenant caught be God caught between himself and the children of Israel. The God caught it between him and, him and himself. If it's a covenant between God and himself, then doesn't, their man is not involved. They would have not had the Old Testament to, in our hands. I get what I'm saying. God would have kept it to himself because it, we are not involved. Are we together? The reason why we have the Old Covenant in our hands in the Old Testament as a Bible is because God caught it with man, the children of Israel. I get what I'm saying. And then the New Covenant, God also caught it with man. Are we together? And that's how we have it in our hands. So God caught the covenant with us and we are to maintain that covenant with him. Because it's, let's, deceive, let's stop deceiving ourselves. If somebody has a covenant with you and only that person is doing his part of the covenant and you're not doing your part of the covenant, will the covenant work? Will it work? Say God is the one who is in covenant with God. not in covenant with God. Uh, stay there. Be there. Let's take a very simple term. In a contractual term, in a contract, in a contract, both parties have their terms of the contract. Is that not so? Yes. Party A and party B, they are terms of the contract. Party A must fulfill his term and party B must fulfill his term for the contract to be what? Standing. If party A fulfills his term and party B does not fulfill his term, the contract is null and void. Same happens if B fulfills and A does not fulfill. These are simple everyday terms that we should work with. And somebody comes and says, God, he has a covenant with God. And the covenant with God is that he's to do this and do that. And you say, um, uh, um, um, it's not New Testament. Uh, uh, speak English. Speak English. We speak in English. They have been keeping that terms of agreement with them and God. And see their lives are flourishing. You that you have English to speak. Can your life compare with your life? Well, you know, it's not, this thing is not by English, yo. It's not by English. I talked about Patrick Muella. How many children was he feeding? I think, I think about 10,000 children. And he fed them throughout by faith. He never requested for any support from anywhere. I get what I'm saying? Their daily meal came by faith. When I read the guy's story, when I listened to his story, I said, Mr. This level of faith, I don't think I ventured there yet. Too. What kind of faith is this one now? What kind of faith? For me, that faith is what you call high BP. For our generation, we call it high blood pressure. Because every day he has to wait for what God has to provide. Ha. Well, uh, his high blood pressure was living with. But it was so easy for him. In fact, it was easier for him than even going to appeal. In our generation, we rather prefer to go and write and solicit and solicit and, and solicit and solicit. But Muella said, no, soliciting is hard work for him. <laughs> this faith life is easier for him. Said so it was much more easier for him. So he was enjoying it. Sometimes he says, 
What the children are to eat in that day, it has, he doesn't know. He doesn't know what they are to eat. There's no food available. And he waits and says, let's see what God will do. Let's see how God will come through for us today. Let's see how God will come through. Before you know, he receives a, somebody comes and drops a check. Exactly the money they need for the day. It happened throughout. He became so used to faith. And what was the secret? Read Bible to your spirit is full, to your soul is full, to your full. He didn't come out and say, That is my covenant, that's my secret, but that's, a, that's actually a covenant now. That's an agreement between him and God. Read it till your soul is full, till you are full. And then you start your day. If it's our generation now, you say, See, don't be legalistic. Don't be legalistic. Don't in, don't, see, don't impose burdens on the children of God. Don't impose burdens. See, you can read it as you want. Read it as you want. Can you? This is fair to become my blood pressure for you. <laughs> uh, now, you know that if in our time they tell us that, thing, that kind of faith cannot work again. No? You say, why do you, why you have to be employing that kind of faith? See, you can apply to NGOs. They are there to support you. But these men live by this thing. Has the God they are serving changed? They had, they had agreements with God. Are we together? They had agreements with God. They had agreements with God. They were not just with him, but they were obedient to the agreements with the Lord. Are you getting what I'm saying? And it worked for them. It worked for them. It worked for them. Why should our, our generation now try to play down on all these practices? Amen. Why should they play down on all these practices? You know, it reminds me um, of, I remember when I was working in an organization and I, went, I was preparing for an exam and I'll read through the night and I'll go to work and it's not easy. You sleep off now. I was in a client's office and I was sleeping off. And the client came and saw me sleeping off. And the client was angry. And how would I tell my boss that I'm, pre I'm preparing for an exam? And I, he reported to my boss. And when my boss summoned me to my boss, I'm sorry, you. It's actually, I'm reading for an exam. You're a professional now. Nah? I'm reading for the professional exam. My boss didn't want to listen to me. He said, in fact, you know, I was in national service. In fact, he will report me back to, to the government. Or in fact, he will sack me and made so many, many, many talk, 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 said so many things. After I finished speaking, I didn't talk. I went back home. When I went back home, I arranged both my boss and the client in a place of prayer. <laughs> Are you getting what I'm saying? When I dealt with your matter, when I dealt with your matter for like one hour, two hours, like 2 a.m. there about, when I finished dealing with your matter, I was not afraid though. I came to work. When I came to work, my, client, my, my boss called me. He said, hey, Chimdi, come here. I said, yes, sir. He said, okay, what's going to happen is that I'm going to remove you from that particular um, client's office. And I'm sending you to another client's office. I said, thank you, sir. <laughs> you don't know what I've done to you at night. Uh, are you get what I'm saying? So I understood these principles. Are, are we together? They were covenants. They were things that I knew how to operate. Some people may not believe in that. Are you getting me? But I believe in it. I knew how to work it out. Amen to Jesus. So you must not just only be willing, you must be obedient. There are terms of agreement we have with the Lord. And everybody, as you walk with the Lord, you're going to have terms of agreement. Are we together? And if you try to go contrary to those terms, you will be, it will still break your leg. <laughs> Can a Copeland wrote his covenant with God? He will not ask anybody to meet his need. He will not ask anybody for where to preach and every of that. And I took the, the thing and I took it also. I said, I will work with it. Actually, asking people to preach is not working for me. Is it working? It's not working. <laughs> it's not working. I tried to negate it. It didn't work. It doesn't work for me. It's not working for me. Are we together? He wrote those things and that was what worked for him. I put them. I said, okay, I will try them too. I, I tried to ask people to preach. It's not working for me. It's not working. It's not working. Are we together? So that means that term of agreement he had with the Lord is also applicable to me. So you must be obedient to some terms. Many men of God will not tell you their terms they have with the Lord. Are you getting what I'm saying? Christians who have a good relation with the Lord will not tell you the terms they have with the Lord. I heard of one that is called B, B, B. Bible before brushing. Some call it Bible before breakfast. That means they must read the Bible before they brush their mouth. 
in the morning. You must read the Bible before they take breakfast. Now, some of those things you say they are legalistic. Why are you imposing burdens on the train of God? But it's all those small, small obedience that we grow into big obedience. And then you become a man of great faith. They say he's a man of great faith. No, check it out. It was one small obedience that he built on. It's not enough to be willing. We must be what? We must be obedient. Amen to Jesus. So it's not enough to hear the instruction from the word of God. It is more than enough to obey it. Because only obedience turns an instruction into what? A manifestation. Until the word of God is obeyed, thus mixed with faith, it cannot be made flesh in the affairs of men and profit them. Until the word of God is mixed with faith via obedience, it cannot be made flesh in the affairs of men, and so it cannot profit men. Obedience is the act of mixing the word of God with faith. Hmm. Obedience is what? The act of mixing the word of God with faith. So you take the word of God. When you obey it, you have actually mixed it with faith. And when the word of God is mixed with faith, the end result is called profit. Hebrews 4 verse 2. For unto us were the gospel preached, as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not be mixed with faith in them that heard it. So when the word of God is not mixed with faith in the heart of hearers, it does not profit them. Are you getting what I'm saying? It may even bring them into losses if they are not careful. Are you getting what I'm saying? But when we mix the word of God with faith, it always gives us what? Profit. So when Christians want to profit from the word of God, we mix it with faith. Obedience is mixing the word of God with faith. Jumping at divine instruction. Are you getting what I'm saying? Jumping at it, even when it's not rational. When it doesn't make sense from the human standpoint. Hallelujah to Jesus. So basically, faith from the human standpoint is throwing caution into the wind. Hey, or is it throwing the wind into caution? Whatever. But it's throwing caution into the wind and they say, you are, please, you, are, you see, you have to be cautious. We're acting in faith from the human standpoint. You may not be cautious. I get what I'm saying. But that is what God is saying you should do. Amen to Jesus. Praise God forevermore. So when these men sat, they obeyed the instruction of the Lord, thus acted in faith. Sitting is a state of rest. Thus obedience, which is an act of faith, is taking the position of rest in Christ Jesus and his finished work. What is obedience? Obedience is taking the position of rest in Christ and his finished work. So at that point, you are not trusting yourself to do it. That is why obedience is better than sacrifice. Somehow in sacrifice, there's this sense of self in it. Are you getting what I'm saying? You feel something. You feel the pain when you're sacrificing. But when you're obeying, you don't feel the pain. It's Christ that feels the pain. Are you getting what I'm saying? <laughs> in sacrifice, you feel the pain. Are we together? But in obedience, Christ feels the pain. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah to you. And he has finished feeling all the pain on the cross of Calvary for you. This position of rest, we always negate rational and natural opinions. It will challenge the norms and change the status quo. To always challenge the norms and change the status quo. From Abraham who left his father's house to Jesus who left his father's house to earth, obedience will require total and absolute trust that keeps one at rest in the Father God. And for us who are saved, it will require what? Trust in the finished work of Christ. Are we together? Yes. And we have to be at rest. So when you are trusting the finished work of Christ, you must be at rest. You cannot be trusting the finished work of Christ and be perturbed. No, you are at rest. Because why? Sitting is a state of what? Of rest. Praise God forevermore. This means that trust without rest is no faith. Simple. You know some people, they trust in themselves. Or they trust in people. I know when you are trusting a human being, you know that you are not at rest. So I trust that guy, I trust that guy. But you know you're not at rest. Are you get what I'm saying? I trust him, but you know you're not at rest. I trust my uncle, but you know, you know you're not at rest. Your uncle may fail you. Are you get what I'm saying? So trust without rest is not faith. Praise the Lord forevermore. Amen. Amen. Trust without rest is not faith. When we act in faith, we must be at what? Rest. This is because faith is absolute trust in the character, the nature, and the ability of God, which makes us at rest because this faith is God's own faith. In other words, faith is God's trust in himself. It's not our faith, it's his faith. So when we're acting in faith, we're acting in what God uses to trust himself. 
So if God is the one trusting himself, why should you be at, why should I be pet up? Are you get what I'm saying? I'm to be at rest because God is trusting himself. This is why we pray in a spiritual seated position, not standing position. Are you get what I'm saying? When we pray in faith, we do what? We pray in a spiritually seated position. Physically, we may be standing. Are you get what I'm saying? Physically, we may be kneeling. Physically, we may be lying. But spiritually, we are seated. We are seated. That's a prayer of faith. When he be seated among, seek among you, let him call upon the elders. And they shall anoint him with oil and pray for him. And the prayer of faith shall what? He the sick. What is the prayer of faith? It's a prayer in the sitting position in the realms of the spirit. Trusting that Jesus has already done it. Hallelujah to Jesus. Praise God forevermore. Why must we sit in Christ and with Christ? Two reasons. Number one, we must seek in Christ and with Christ because he is seated at the right hand of the Father God till his enemies are made his footstool. He is seated. Why should you be standing? How you get what I'm saying? The Bible says we are heads of God and joint heads with Christ. Is that not so? So how can our elder <laughs> be sitting and we be standing? Why now? Are we together? He is sitting. We are to be sitting. Are we, in fact, we are to be more seated because he's the other one. He's the one doing all the work. <laughs> Amen. Matthew 21 verse, 40, Matthew 22 verse 44. The Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou at my right hand, sit thou at my right hand, till I make thine enemies thy footstool. Luke 20 verse 42. And David himself said in the book of Psalms, the Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou on my right hand. Acts 2 verse 34. For David is not ascended into the heavens, but he seeth himself. The Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou on my right hand. Hebrews 1 verse 13. But to which of the angels said he at any time, sit on my right hand, until I make thine enemies thy footstool. Only Jesus is said that too. So Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father God, waiting for the, his enemies to be made what? His footstool. That's why we are to sit down too. I get what I'm saying? He's sitting, we should not be standing. Are we together? A judge will never stand, no matter the pressure. Are you getting me? No matter the pressure, no matter what is happening in the court, no matter the court is turning upside down, a judge will never stand. Jesus is the judge. Are you getting what I'm saying? Are we together? And the have a father is called the judge of the earth. A judge will never stand up. Jesus is to judge. At the Bema seat. Are we together? He will never stand up. Judge is never stand up. Have you ever seen a judge that stand up and say, if you behave in my court? I don't like this thing happening in my court. Have you seen a judge that stand up and he uses the hammer to be hitting? This is my judgment. Yes, I have judged you like this. In my judgment, I have judged. Oh, now I command you, 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 you criminal. I have said you will go to jail. Uh, go to jail. You stand up and he's hitting the hammer. Stand you go to ah, uh, uh, they will boggle him. You know that this is a mental case. It's a mental plus spiritual case. Are you know what I'm saying? Judge, a judge will never, will never stand up. They are always seated. Why? Because that sitting is a state of authority. It's a state of rest. Lawyers will stand. The accused will stand. Prosecuting counsel will stand. Defending counsel will stand. Plaintiff will stand. Witness will stand. Except he is sick, they can give him a seat in the witness box or his age. Are you get what I'm saying? Every other person will stand, but judge does not stand. He cannot stand. Jesus is the judge. He cannot stand. He will sit down. He keeps sitting down executing judgment. So that's why we have to sit down too. Are we together? He's sitting, we are to sit. No, no force is to make us stand. Spiritually, now start standing. Why now? We are executing our judgment. We are seated. The second reason is that we must sit in and with Christ because we have been raised up together with Christ and made to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Ephesians 2 verse 6. And has raised us up together and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So obedience is the act of sitting in Christ and with Christ. That's obedience. You are seated. When you obey, you have seated. You have sat down. Are you getting what I'm saying? When you obey, you, are, you have sat down. But until you obey, you are still standing. That's why when you, are not, when you have not obeyed the instruction of the Lord, you are perturbed, you are pacing up and down, you are confused because you have not obeyed. Are you getting what I'm saying? But once you obey, you have sat down. Are we together? To sit on the grass is to act in obedience to the word of God, which is faith. Thus, 
Rest in Christ and his finished work. Child of God, sit down. Today, wherever you under the sound of my voice, you don't make Jesus a Lord and personal Savior, you'll be led to make that prayer. Please pray that prayer. And you are there as a child of God. And you know that you have not sat down yet. There are instructions you have not obeyed, so you have not sat down. You are asking the Lord, I receive grace to sit down. No? I receive grace to sit down. In every instruction you give to me, I obey. Oh. So I receive grace to sit down. Open our mouth and begin to pray. Oh, Abba, Hori, Safalai. Today, beloved, I would like to invite you to receive the Lord Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior by making this prayer of salvation along with me. Say, believing in your heart, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe that you came to this earth. You died for the sins of the world, cleansed the sin of those who believe in you, and resurrected from the dead. This you did because you love me. Today, I receive your love, your death, your forgiveness, and your resurrection. I renounce my sins today. I choose to make you the Lord of my life. Jesus, I choose to serve and follow you all the days of my life. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, wow. Glory be to God for making this decision. And I pray that the Lord Almighty will keep you safe and secured, even to the end, in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Congratulations. For your love gift of any amount to Grace Life Kami Podcast, kindly use any of our giving channels available. To give in dollars, send to account number 033-154-551-2013 with SWIFT code MBGHGHAC to give in CDs. You can send to Universal Merchant Bank Ghana. Account number 033-254-551-2017 or to give in Naira, send to Ecobank Nigeria. Account number 5541020592 Also for further enquiries you can call us on +2330545947132 or send us an email via ministry at gmail.com Remain ever blessed Beloved thanks for listening to the full teaching we believe you have been blessed Please send us your praise reports, send us your comments. We'd love to hear from you. Kindly tell others about Grace Life Komi podcasts. Share what God is doing in your life through these teachings. God bless you richly. Amen.